if you have less money than Elon, you should probably uh, watch out. You can make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money. You're a super villain. <laughs> That's what a super villain does. What are his real intentions? Yeah, and why does he refuse to talk about his personal life? Like, what's he hiding? He's going to be building a very big plant in the United States. He has to, because we help him, so he has to help us. Even the most golden among us, I mean, they have stellar careers. But if you look at the other areas of their lives, you'll see where their demons manifest themselves. Why do so many people say he's evil? Isn't he? What are you talking about? He's literally saving humankind. Oh, come on. Is it true that you are evil? No, I am not the evil. I just uh, misunderstood. What the hell do you make of someone like that? What did he do? He made an electric car. It's <laughs> basically impossible. And then he built a bloody rocket that you could reuse, which was impossible. And then he put one of his cars on top of the rocket and he shot it up into space. Okay, we need to get to the bottom of who Elon Musk really is. Okay, so when did it all start? It's not when or where, but who. It starts with the world's oldest supermodel. Her name is May, like the month, but with an E at the end. Thanks for spelling my name, Elon. <laughs> says May Haldeman immigrated from Canada to South Africa in 1950. 20 years later, she married Errol Musk, and a year after that, in 1971, Elon was born. Um, yeah, he always was very curious, and when he started reading, anything he read, he memorized. I mean, he, he knew exactly what he'd read. I thought I was insane. Why do you think you were insane? Because it was clear that other people did not, would, their mind wasn't exploding with ideas. They, they wouldn't understand I hope, you. I hope they wouldn't find out because they might like put me away or something. You thought that? For a second, yes. He hated going to school because the other kids liked to follow him home and they would throw soda cans at his head. Wasn't his parents' marriage tumultuous? Yeah, Errol was allegedly abusive. Allegedly? Did you suffer that kind of abuse? Yes. You know there was a saying in South Africa, when, when you get divorced you stop falling in the shower mm -hmm. because every time you have a scene with bruises you said you fell in the shower. Elon never talks about his father. Why is that? Whenever the topic of Errol arrives, members of Elon's family clam up. They're in agreement that he is not a pleasant man to be around. It was not a happy childhood. My father has serious issues. So he sought refuge in computer games, which got him into coding. He made a space-themed video game called Blaster. What did video games do for you? And they made me want to learn how to program computers. Because then I thought, well, I could make my own games. You get to control something. Yeah, you construct a little universe. When I was in high school, we called them geeks. And it was not a compliment. What is a geek? Somebody who is obsessed with learning something, mastering a skill set or a body of knowledge, and would rather do that than develop social skills. I think on like Wikipedia, it says that I was inspired uh, by my father in terms of technology. This is not the. This is actually not true. I think that needs to be corrected. <laughs> um, he's somewhat of a luddite, actually, um, in in many respects, particularly computers. Uh, he didn't want to buy a computer and refused to use computers and said they would never amount to anything. As far as role models, um... Neil Armstrong was one of his heroes. There's one small step for man. One. Do you think, from your knowledge of the moon, having been there, that it is going to be possible in the foreseeable future to set up scientific bases there on anything like a large scale? Oh, I'm quite certain that we'll have such bases uh, in our lifetime. That, right there, that's what gave Elon his purpose. When I was growing up, I'd, I'd read lots of books and they were very often set in the United States. It seemed like a lot of new technology was being developed in the United States, so I, I thought, okay, I really want to work on new technology, so I want to get to Silicon Valley. Back in 95, there weren't very many people on the internet, um, and certainly nobody was making any money at all. Uh, most people thought the internet was going to be a fad. In the following years, he founded Zip2 and then PayPal. So this is an ATM. What we're going to do is transform the traditional banking industry. I met him when uh, I was 18, he was 19. We were at college. Science fiction novelist Justine Wilson. My fear is that we become spoiled brats, that we lose a sense of appreciation and um, perspective. How many kids did they have? Six. I'm only counting five. I had a son who died at 10 weeks. Um, it was called a SIDS-related incident. 
And I went to Burning Man, I think, six times after that happened. And I had a ritual I would do. And I'd go to the Temple of Loss, but I always found a place on one of the walls, and I would write, Nevada Alexander Musk. He was a good baby. And then they would set the temple on fire. And that ritual was incredibly comforting to me. Did Elon ever talk about it? No. He just threw himself into his work. Creating a company is almost like having a child. So it's sort of like, how do you say your child should not have food? So one, once you have the company, you have to, to feed it and nurse it yeah. and <laughs> take care of it, of it even if it, it ruins you. Yeah. How did you get through that period of crisis? Yeah. Can we just break for a second? Sure, sure, sure. There need to be things that make you look forward to waking up in the morning. You wake up in the morning, you look forward to the day, you look forward to the future. In a future where we are a space-bearing civilization and out there among the stars, I think that's very exciting. Darkness does not have to mean evil. You know, it can refer to anything that has not yet been brought out into the light, beyond boundaries, beyond our comfort zone, where a lot of us do not want to go. Why did they get divorced? Elon made it clear that he did not want to talk about Nevada's death. He was obsessed with his work. When he was home, his mind was elsewhere. I felt insignificant in his eyes and I began thinking about what effect our dynamic would have on our five young sons. Elon agreed to enter counseling, but he was running two companies and carrying a planet of stress. One month and three sessions later, he gave me an ultimatum. Either we fix this marriage today, or I will divorce you tomorrow. He filed for divorce the next morning. I felt numb, but strangely relieved. So he left her? Isn't he afraid of being alone? Listen to this. Six weeks after he filed for divorce, he proposed to English actress Tallulah Riley. Elon proposed really quickly. Um, I'd probably have said yes to anyone that seemed half sensible if they proposed after 10 days, just because it's kind of an interesting thing to do. Um, you know, obviously moved straight into the house with the children and it became a very real thing immediately. My parents were traumatized by this whole experience. Although there's been so many times that, right, I'm getting on a plane to England and I'm never gonna see you again. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, no, not really. They divorced three years later, remarried that same year, and divorced again in 2016. And then came even more trouble. Amber Heard. Men categorize women in one of four ways. Mothers, virgins, sluts, and bitches. She was in the middle of her own divorce with Johnny Depp. That's messy. Johnny was attacking me. She threw a vodka bottle at me. He was about to push my sister down the stairs. It smashed. I would have done anything. Bone in here was uh, completely shattered. Amber Heard was offered 24-7 security, arranged by Elon after she told him that she wanted a restraining order against Johnny Depp. Elon really got caught up in the middle of it. And that's when he started acting more and more erratic unstable, reckless, operatic, doing things that seemed impulsive, un-CEO-ish. I'm just being me. He just seems to be jumping from one relationship to another. Actually, it's called repetition compulsion, where we are unconsciously driven to recreate a certain situation or relationship from the past in an effort to resolve it. Why do you think that is? He opened up to Rolling Stones right after his breakup with Amber Heard. I just broke up with my girlfriend. I was really in love and it hurt bad. Well, she broke up with me more than I broke up with her, I think. I've been in severe emotional pain for the last few weeks. It's so hard for me to even meet people. I've seen you speak in person. We've watched some of your interviews. Like sometimes you seem visibly sad. No one should put this many hours into work. This is not good. And people should not work this hard. I'm not, they should not do this. This is too, it's very painful. Painful in what sense? Uh, it's, it, hurts my, it hurts my brain and my heart. Here's what the interviewer wrote. 
I eventually tell him that it may not be a good idea to jump right into another relationship. He may want to take some time to figure out why his previous relationships haven't worked in the long run. If I'm not in love, if I'm not with a long-term companion, I cannot be happy. I explained that needing someone so badly that you feel like nothing without them is textbook codependence. Musk disagrees strongly. It's not true. I'll never be happy without having someone. Going to sleep alone kills me. In this moment, he seems like a child who is afraid of abandonment. And that may be the origin story of Musk's super ambitions. But the edge can be a very interesting place to be. I mean, it can be lonely and painful and sometimes dangerous, and I don't mean to underplay any of that. But it's also the place where something is in the process of turning into something else. Revolution enters at the edges. Well, we've spent part, if not most, if not all of our lives trying to amputate those parts of ourselves that did not fit. You know, we've tried to be pleasing and we've tried to do what's expected and we suck at it. And we eventually reach a point where we realize that we are so depressed or stuck or numbed out that the only way to save ourselves is to figure out how to be ourselves Purpose. Before we call these people visionaries, yeah, this is bad. before they have that kind of success, we have other words for them. We call them, you know, geek or outsider, socially awkward, weird, a little different, odd one out. When so. critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is we've done it. That's what outsiders do. They don't change the world from within by fitting in or conforming. They change the world by creating a new one. I really don't want my children to pay for my sins or to be afraid for me. I don't really have a choice. I have to be the man I want to be at this point. I don't have any more room for failure of that kind. Yeah.